Welcome to the CED Mosba uh, online video series. Uh, today we're going to show you how to use the SD card to back up and restore a processor. Okay, so um, the situation arises a lot where um, you have a controller fail um, and you have to replace it with a, a, a controller you order from the distributor or one you have off your shelf but you don't have a copy of the software or you don't have a copy of the program uh, the OEM or integrator might not be available that day whatever the issue is and you need to be able to get the the processor up and running again so there is a way to use the SD card in the uh, 1769 L3 one, two, and three, as well as the um, co control logics um, processors, the L7s and L8s, use the SD card to back up the firmware and the code uh, so that you can just uh, load it into a new processor and be up and running. So we're going to step through that real quick. Um, so the uh, first thing you're going to do is running system. So you cannot uh, do the prep work for this um, in, unless you can be able to take the controller out of run mode. So you have to be able to take the system down. So a good time to do this would be when startup on the machine is done and up and running. Um, also uh, to note any, after any changes are done, this procedure must also be done or else when you restart the PLC and power it back up, the old program is going to overwrite any of those changes that were made. So you want to make sure anytime there's changes made that this procedure is done. So the prep work is uh, you come online with Logix uh, 5000, with Studio 5000, you go to controller properties and non-vault memory. So you can see here this is this load store button has been grayed out so and that's because we are currently in run mode. So what we're going to do is come over and take our processor to program and then the button comes available. So we're going to click on that. So here's you have some choices. Um, over here, uh, when do you want to load this image? So uh, power up would be any time that the processor powers up. It goes ahead and, and loads the, uh, the, pr the image off the SD card. Um, uninitialized memory would be some sort of corrupt memory if something went wrong um, in the processor it would reload the pro uh, firmware and the program to fix the controller and user initiated would be have to be manual so somebody would have to come into studio 5000 go online and load from the card so we're going to make this a power up because we're going to make a boot SD card so anytime that the processor boots we're going to load the thing and then so the load mode so when it's done loading do you want it to go right into program or right into run mode or you want it to stay in program and then you decide to put it into run we're going to put ours in the run for the sake of this video um, the automatic firmware updates what this is is you can back up the firmware um, if I click this over to enable, you would back up the firmware to any I.O. modules, uh, drives, anything connected to this processor via network or the local chassis to the SD card. And then if so, if they're set to an exact match in the um, firmware setup in the properties tab of that module, then they would have their firmware backed up. And then anytime you replace that module, it will again receive its uh, firmware from the SD card. We're going to cover that in another video. Um, so right now I'm just going to leave this at disable. Uh, this also is the first step in automatic device configuration, which uh, is something that I'm going to cover in a later video. So be uh, on the lookout for that. So and then here we would click store, but I wanted to point out this button as well. The load button, this is where you would manually come in and say, okay, I want to load from the SD card to my current controller. So this would be the manual uh, user initiated setup. But we're going to go ahead and back this guy up right now as current its current state. We're going to hit store and then yes. Now it's going to come up. It's going to give us a warning saying that this could take a few minutes um, and we're going to be able, unable to connect to the controller because this takes a few minutes to load that image to the SD card and then restart the processor. So we're going to we'll be right back after that finishes. Okay, so just looking at the lights on my processor, I can tell it's rebooted and back up to communicating, so we're going to go back online with it. And you can see that 3.13, which is this date and the time on my computer, that, we, uh, that was the last time we stored, so we that worked. 
we can go ahead and put our processor back in run mode. And now we can take the SD card out of the processor, put it away somewhere. We could leave it in the processor. Um, it just every time, a reminder, every time that that processor reboots, this image of the program is going to be loaded. So if any changes are made or anything, it's going to overwrite those changes. So every time that there's a change made, you want to make sure that you repeat this process. So then whatever you're going to do with the SD card, whether take it out and put it away somewhere for safekeeping or leave it in the mod in the processor is fine. It's just uh, kind of a, a preference. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to flash the processor to a different firmware version and make some changes, um, some other changes to communications. And we'll be right back. I'll show you those just to prove to you that we know this works. Okay, so what I've done <coughs> is I've flashed the processor to a different version uh, than what our program is in, and I've also um, changed the IP settings to kind of simulate uh, a different controller uh, that we need to uh, insert this SD card into. Um, so if, you, if we open up my links here, you can see my controller is missing, uh, my dot .12, it's not there anymore. Uh, so I connected to it USB, so if we come in to our um, Lynx Classic here at Lynx Enterprise and we go try to go through the USB still trying to connect through the old driver here so let's go down through here and we go here and we go go online look okay online controller has no program in it and it's version 28 which completely mismatches our up our other controller. So now I'm going to go over and I'm going to put our SD card back into our controller and I'm going to cycle power and we'll see what happens. So uh, what I'm going to do here is just uh, go ahead and put our SD card back into the processor until that clicks, right? Um, and then I'm just going to cycle power and I just want to just show you what happens when I do that. Turn the power back on. You'll see the SD um, light down here on the Compact Logic start to flash a few times. Um, see if you guys can see that once it comes on. Um, and that just uh, you know that's the processor reading from the SD card, indicating that you it is it is going to go ahead and load from there, and that uh, when we get back up and running, it'll go back into run mode, and we should be back online in our processor in just a few minutes. You can see the SD card there reading. And then it's going to go into its boot mode once that image loads off the SD card. And there we go. We're going to start booting up and we'll be back online in just a minute. All right, so here we are um, back at our program. Uh, the lights on my processor, the run light has come on, uh, the I.O. light's solid. That indicates to me everything's back up and running. Uh, as well as the panel view I have connected here is back up and talking to the processor. So I know it's good. And I can just come in here, go click go online just to verify. And so what happened was is the firmware got updated on the processor, uh, the program got loaded, and the IP uh, address changes, the settings were all reset to what they would have been when it was saved to the SD card. So this is a way for you to back up your processor uh, without having to pull out your laptop and put the, the new, the, you know, a program into a new processor um, just on power up. And um, there you go. Enjoy. Once again, thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out future and current videos by subscribing to CED Mosba Electric Supply on YouTube or visiting www.mosba.com slash media. Thanks again.